Dear students, in the revised pattern of ESC 2017, a topic, the standards and the quality practices in production, construction, maintenance and services is included. As you know, if anybody want to excel in any engineering department, he should have both engineering and managerial skills. Keeping this in you, the UPSC has framed this as a part of the syllabus. As expected by the professors of Ace Engineering Academy, the questions, nearly nine questions, appeared in the recently concluded ESC 2017 prelims. So keeping this in you, we are going to have a brief seminar on the above topic. Hope it will definitely help you. Our professor Venkatadri Reddy will give the overall idea of this particular topic and he will also cover some of the questions, the line in which the questions can be expected. Hi friends, let us consider why standards and quality practices now, the answer is simple, considering the global competition, it is imperative for any sector in the modern world to follow standards and quality practices. Also, it sets up a benchmark, it sets up a benchmark and because of the intense competition, globally when we fight with competitors, there needs to be a, a parameter or a global benchmark. A benchmark can be you yourself if you are you are the best or your competitor who is number one in the industry or it can be based on an independent agency. Now, <clears throat> where are these standards needed? The standards are needed as discussed. It is suitable for any sector standards as well as quality practices. Like for example, in construction we can consider, in maintenance we can consider and apart from this in any production or service sector we need to consider. Now quality introduction, as discussed quality is applicable to both product based companies as well as service based companies. Now when you say product based company, what is a product based company where the entire company is focused on a product. Whereas when you talk about the service sector, the focus is mainly on the service. For example, ticket booking is a service providing or we can think of any customer care. These are mainly service oriented. There are few companies which are pure, they provide pure service and there are hardly any company, there is any hardly any company which provides only product. So service is by default applicable anywhere, but then you cannot differentiate purely a product based. But then, as I was talking about, it is applicable to both type of sectors. Now, when it is a definition of quality, there are some gurus, mainly it was developed by Western concept. So, there are some gurus who gave these definitions. Like for example, Juran told quality is fitness for intended use. As per ISO, which is a, a focus of uh, IES paper, they say it is a totality of characteristics that bear an ability to satisfy stated as well as in intended needs. So sometimes in needs are not stated, but basically customer might not say it, but then to satisfy the customer you need to know. Next, <clears throat> when you say dimensions of quality, the different dimensions of quality, for example, cost can be a dimension or features can be a dimension or maintainability can be a dimension. So we need to consider topmost dimensions based on whether it is product based or service based. Next, we also need to consider the view. When we say view, it can be both internal as well as external. When you say internal view, you are more worried about whether it is satisfying the specification or not as more or less you are uh, inspector quality inspector. 
Now, when you say external view, you are worried more about how the customer is viewing us, viewing our product or viewing our service. So, there comes a main difference between internal and external view. Now, <clears throat> when you talk about cost, particularly related to quality, the two types of cost. First, it is based on conformance and the second, it is based on non-conformance. When you say conformance, confirm, that means satisfying. Now, when you say something is satisfying as per the norms, then for that, what we need to do? First, we need to test our product. We need to test our service. So, testing to some extent, that testing is internal testing. So, it can be appraisal. So, when you say inspection, testing, calibration, all this comes under appraisal costs. The other types of costs are where you do some kind of improvement in your company or get an international recognition. So, in that sense, it is called as prevention cost. So, these two come under conformance. Now, the second segment is cost of non-conformance. When you say non-conformance, if a product or service is not conforming to the requirement, then what will happen? Very simple. The product or service will fail. Who fails it? Customer will fail. Now, when a product or service is failed, then it leads to so many types of costs. For example, customer, you might lose a customer forever. That is one biggest threat. Or customer might penalize you. Penalty can be direct or indirect. A big customer might pose a direct penalty or a small customer can pose an indirect penalty like uh, uh, posting something on you on Facebook is definitely an indirect penalty. So, that is non-conformance in terms of external failure. That apart, there is one more cost which you face within the company that is internal failure cost. If a product or service is failing within, why it will fail? Probably your inspector has checked it and it is not satisfying. So, as a result of this, it might go for rework or rejection. If it is going for rework, extra production which is waste or if it is a redesign or if it is retest again, why retest? Because inspector has already checked it. Now, the moment the inspector is doing a retest, it is waste. So, that is also internal failure cost. So, all put together, we consider cost of conformance, cost of non-conformance as quality cost. Next, the most important feature, where the way quality has evolved is because of some kind of gurus, we say. Now, predominantly, we classify them as Western gurus, Eastern gurus. So, let us consider Western gurus because the quality concept was introduced by them first. Now, most prominently, the Western guru is Deming. Now, Deming is very highly rated in Japan because he was instrumental in Japanese quality revolution. And you say any product you say made in Japan, that is world class. And Deming is the founder. So, it is no surprise that a Japan quality award is on his name. Now, apart from Deming, there are some other quality gurus like Juran, Crosby and Goldrat. Goldrat Ilihau is a very latest one. He is from Israel. Now, Goldrat has uh, gave a concept called Theory of Constraints and his book is very famous, The Goal. Next, let us consider a sample question here. List 1 is regarding quality gurus and list 2 is regarding some relevancy regarding quality gurus. On the list 1, you have 4 gurus and the list 2 quality is free, quality handbook, PDCA. Basically, PDCA stands for plan, do, check and act. That is an improvement cycle. Now, <clears throat> this PDCA has been given by uh, the guru Deming. Now, C3, look at the quotes. C3, there are two options, A and B. Now, let us see what is common to these two quotes. A4 is common. Therefore, you do not need to consider A4. No need to break the head. Now, you look at B or D. So, that would be the key. Now, when you see B, that is Juran. Now, what Juran gave? B, if you look at Juran, 
talked about a quality handbook. So, quality handbook B2. So, there goes the answer B is a choice. Let us consider Eastern Gurus. Now, Eastern Gurus, if you observe all of them, they are Japanese Ishikawa. Now, you must have come across this Ishikawa. He has given a concept called fish bone diagram. Fish bone diagram, it is basically cause and effect diagram. Apart from that, Ishikawa also introduced a concept called as quality circle. Then Nakajima. Nakajima is uh, considered to be father of TPM. TPM stands for total productive maintenance. Next, Yoji Akao. He has contributed for quality functional deployment, QFD in short. Now, next, Masaki Imai. He is a person who introduced Kaizen. Taichi Ono. He is a father of Toyota production system. It's in short TPS. It's also called as just in time. And uh, in West, uh, they call it as lean, lean concept. All are one and the same. Given by Taichi Ono, an engineer who worked for Toyota company. Taguchi. Taguchi has given a concept called quality loss function. Quality loss function. It's a parabolic curve. Next, Shigo Shingo. He has given a concept called SMED, single minute exchange of dice. Die is a manufacturing term, but then it is applicable for any type of sector. For example, the changeover, the changeover time in a Formula 1 race is uh, less than a minute. Whereas here, the objective for any changeover is supposed to be less than 10 minutes. Single minute, they say, but then single digit. Okay. Let us consider a sample question. List 1. The four concepts regarding Eastern Gurus, Kanban, Pokayoki, SMED, Gemba. List 2 is regarding some concept related to it. Let us see match the following. Here, Kanban, it is a bin system used in inventory. So, therefore, inventory control system you can consider. So, A1. Now, when you see quotes A1, the two options, option A, option C. Now, let us see what is common to them. B4 is common. Therefore, you can go for C or D. So, C, when you say SMED, just now we talked about SMED, single minute exchange of price, it is basically change over time. So, C2, so when you say C2, C is the answer. Next, let us move on to quality tools. Now, quality tools we consider broadly into two categories, what if the data is available and the second what if the data is not available or you say not enough data is available. When the data is available, there are some tools here like for example, bar graphs, histograms, pie charts, Pareto charts, scatter diagrams, fishbone diagram, just now we talked about fishbone diagram that is cause and effect diagram, control charts, then process charts. These are when this can be used when data enough data is available. When not enough data is available, then what type of uh, tools can be used? Relationship diagram, affinity diagram, tree diagram, matrix diagram. Matrix diagram is useful in quality functional deployment, QFD, as I was talking about earlier. Then process decision chart. And last but not least, arrow diagram. Arrow diagram is uh, basically part of network diagram used in project management. Next, quality standards. When you say quality standards, first let us talk about international standards. Now, CMM, it stands for Capability Maturity Model. It is basically followed in software industries. So, the highest level given is 5. So, CMM level 5, CMM integration, CMMI level 5. That is the top level or the top certification given to a software company. Next, ISO, that is very famous in the sense, 
International Organization for Standards. International Organization for Standards. Now, it gives certificates to all the different sectors. Next, CE, Europe Certified. It is basically meant for electronic uh, components, mainly uh, you can say batteries. Next, Six Sigma. Six Sigma is a concept developed wherein you make a mistake one in a million. Precisely, three mistakes per million. That is Six Sigma concept. It is applicable for also any type of uh, uh, sector. Almost all ITES and IT sectors have got this certification. I am talking about top most companies. Next, coming to national standards. Now, when you say national standards, uh, our, there is one organization called as Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS. Earlier it used to be ISI, now it has become Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS. Now, they give certifications to different uh, sectors. For example, Hallmark, it is a symbol, Hallmark is a symbol, you must have observed a triangle symbol, given to gold and silver ornaments. Next, FSSAI, Food Safety Standards Authority of India. Now, when you say food safety, it talks about any processed food, any processed food like uh, fruit juice or pickles, these are all part of FSSA. Now, off late FSSA was in uh, picture one year ago when they banned Maggie. So, relevancy is also some importance where weightage is based on the standards which are relevant from the current affairs point of view. Next, Eggmark. Eggmark is a mark given by Bureau of Indian Standards for agricultural products apart from processed foods. Next, ISA is told. This is a symbol given to any other type of component, product or service. Obviously, uh, ISO is one where which is very famous. So, little bit of focus will go for ISO. Now, there is a system, that system like uh, you talk about international organization for standards. The criteria for awarding certification, they have set up a criteria, wherein uh, they have given some standards like for example, 22,000 goes for environment. Now, you need to know the management system here and the standards used in the different sectors. Let us see a sample question, list 1, list 2, ISO 50001. Now, ISO 50001 is meant for energy management, energy management. Now, if you observe the quotes, there is only one choice, A3. You are lucky enough to get such a question. Please observe the way we are focusing on questions is, the moment I am solving a A1 or A2 like that, I am looking at quotes. So, the reason basically here is, list 1, list 2 when you are trying to match, always focus on the key, focus on the quotes rather than completely solving the match and uh, match the following then getting at the answer. So, here it is very simple, C is the answer. Next, let us consider how the quality has been evolved over a period of time. Now, the quality evolution started right uh, from 1920 and it always goes on. Now, there was a concept like 100 percent inspection. Now, 100 percent inspection is not very recommended because it is obviously taking it time taking. So, cost will be high. Then came a concept called quality control wherein you talked about control charts, sampling and all. Then we moved on to quality assurance where we tried to set up a standard for the process. If the process is good, output will be automatically good. So, that is about quality assurance. And then finally, total quality management where we think of how to improve the quality and improvement is never ending process. So, there are so many tools as we talked about tools and contributions given by western, eastern gurus. So, all those are part of TQM. One of them is we have discussed already just in time. Now, <coughs> 
let us consider uh, part of quality evolution as I was talking about sampling. Now, when you take a sample, you might take one sample, two samples, three samples, but you cannot completely inspect totally. So, by because 100% inspection is not possible. So, in that sense, what to do? When we go for a sample or two samples or multiple samples, we take a sample, verify it and then judge whether to go for the lot or not. Lot is basically the total number of units. So, the judgment is done based on a sample. Now, in that case, our judgment can go wrong. How it can go wrong? Basically, there are two types of errors. Type 1 error. Type 1 error is when a good lot gets rejected. Why a good lot gets rejected? Because of bad sample. So, a bad sample will force you to reject a good lot. Now, how do you consider a sample to be good or bad? For that, you need to give some quality level. That is called an acceptable quality level. Now, when you say AQL, it is the maximum percentage of defects in a lot which makes a lot to be considered good. Now, let us say acceptable level acceptable quality level is some 5 percent. In the chart as you observe it is 2 percent. Now, if you look at the curve, the probability for accepting is 1 only when the percentage of defects in the lot is 0 percent. Now, the percentage of defects in the lot increases, what will happen? The probability of acceptance comes down. Now, For 2 in this case, there is 0 0.95 probability of acceptance. That means 5 percent chance that it can get rejected. Now, who will suffer when a good lot gets rejected? Producer will suffer. Therefore, we call it as producer's risk alpha. Likewise, there is a consumer risk and the corresponding percentage of defects, which ob obviously bad lot that is called as lot tolerance percentage defects. So, the curve is basically operating characteristic curve or simply OC curve. Ideally, OC curve is supposed to be rectangle. When you say ideally, it means sample exactly represents the lot. Now, for example, in a lot if there are 10 percent defects, sample also will have 10 percent defects. So, in that case, ideal curve would be rectangle. Let us consider a sample question. Now, this is a uh, typical IES question wherein you have statement 1, statement 2. Statement 1, double sampling plan is better than single sampling plan. Statement 2, producer's risk and consumer's risk is less in double sampling plan than single sampling plan. Now, how the answer should be? If both statements are correct and statement 2 is a, uh, is a reason for statement 1, then the answer is A. Then, if both statements are true and statement 2 is not the reason for statement 1, then the answer is B. The option is C, if statement 1 is correct, statement 2 is incorrect. The option is D, if statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is correct. Now, first, how to approach it? See statement separately. For example, statement 1, read it separately. Double sampling plan is better than single sampling plan. Is it a correct statement? Yes, of course. Going for two samples is better than going for one sample. It is correct statement. Now, ignore the statement 1. Go to statement 2. Independently read it. Producers and consumers risk is less in double sampling plan than single sampling plan. Producer risk is less, consumers risk is less. That is also correct statement. Now, if both are correct, close statement 2 and then try to give reason for double sampling plan. I said double sampling plan is better. Why? Why it is better? You have to state your on your own. It is better because the possibility of type 1 and type 2 errors will come down in double sampling plan. Therefore, and type 1, type 2 errors, if you see statement 2, they do not mention type 1, type 2 errors, but they mention producer risk, consumer risk. Therefore, the answer is obviously A. 
let us consider one more question from the graph we can say that now in the graph you see two normal dis normally distributed curves one talks about process the other talks about specification now if you see the specification is a dotted line dotted curve rather and the process is a continuous one now the process range is bigger than the specification range now if the process range is bigger than specification range it talks about low capability process range is more than what the customer has specified it talks about low capability now low capability you have two options c and d so it is between them now think of accuracy what about accuracy the accuracy is about how close you are to the target if you see you can use a formula but then here just by seeing you can say how close your target now most of the observations if you observe some of the observations are match some of the outputs are matching with the specification some are not matching that means accuracy is not high so we can make it very simple low capability low accuracy now if you go to a technical terms you talk about a capability and capability index that we can discuss in the in depth analysis so here the option is d next let us move on to a topic maintenance now in maintenance we talk about uh, three important areas reliability replacement and total productive maintenance tpm is a continuous improvement technique where we try to improve the overall equipment effectiveness when you say overall equipment effectiveness it's a combination of availability and uh, quality right where let us not go into details of it we'll focus on one topic here replacement now when you say replacement when you are supposed to replace one lifetime is over you are supposed to replace it second if you don't replace the cost of maintenance will be very high so there is an economical point of view here now let us consider reliability when you say reliable when it is a reliable the moment you expect a system to function and it is functioning you say reliable if it is not functioning not reliable now the famous curve here is a bathtub curve now this curve looks like a bathtub therefore the name goes like that we divide into three categories now initially when the system is new you do some mistakes in terms of design so in that case there are going to be high number of errors so high failure rate so these are early failures now once you learn once you develop then there will be very low level of failures but still you cannot say zero failure zero failure is ideal real is little bit of failure but if you see it is almost very very less and if at all a failure occurs it is purely because of randomness so therefore random failures you can also say service failures but over a period of time you keep on using the product then there are going to be wear and tear problems so failures because of wear and tear are wear worn out failures so that completes a bathtub wherein obviously x axis is time and y axis is frequency of failures now in the reliability let us consider system reliability now when i say system it is group of processors here when you group the processors we broadly categorize them into series system and parallel system <coughs> here in a series system all are connected in a series now as a result of this the system reliability will come down it's a multiplication here now when you say reliability it is a probability that the system doesn't failure so probability obviously here it's a combined probability so system reliability will come down in a series on the other hand system reliability will increase in a parallel system in a parallel system if you observe system will fail only when all of them fails that is one minus of all of them failing 
will give you probably that the system does not fail. So, as a result of this system reliability will be drastically increased in a parallel system. Let us take up a problem. Now, a firm with a processing system using machines X and Y in sequence has now installed another machine Z which performs an equivalent job. Now, in such, for such a question, they need not give a uh, graph or uh, a diagram picture like this. They can simply mention. Now, the respective reliabilities x, y and z are 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. What is the total reliability of the system? Now, let us first talk about x, y. What is the reliability of x, y? They are in series. Because they are in series, reliability should come down. It is a multiplication 0 0.6 into 0 0.5. So, obviously, reliability will come down to 0 0.3. It is lesser than individual values, any minimum of the individual values. Next step. Now, this 0 0.3 or xy you say that is in parallel to z, a z reliability is 0 0.4. So, the combined reliability must be more than 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. Let us see why. Now, system will fail only when both of them fail that is rxy will fail probability for that 0 0.7 or z will fail, z will fail probability for that is 0 0.6. So, 0 0.6 into 0 0.7. 0 0.42 for system to fail. System does not fail for that probability 0 0.58 that is reliability. Reliability system as we discussed it is more than 0 0.3, 0 0.4 it is 0 0.58. Now, as I said the system uh, standards and quality practices are very much applicable in construction. Now, one important standard that is international standard we see in the construction is construction quality assessment system. It is set up by Singapore, it is accepted uh, by many countries, construction quality assessment system it is even accepted in India. That is an international standard. Thank you friends. Thank you Venkat. Hi students, the brief discussion whatever is done by our professor, I hope definitely will help you to some extent. If you have any more queries, feel free to contact us. To win the race, join us.